Hey everybody, welcome to the opensource.com weekly top five full video. I'm Jen and I'm bringing you five of our most popular articles from this past week. Um, we do this on the site every week so you can tune in for our short, brief rundown every Friday by subscribing to our YouTube channel and visiting our top five video playlist. So before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to everybody who's been following along for a while now. We appreciate your readership and um, checking out the videos and helping us share them around. So just a quick thanks to everybody who's been watching. All right, so at number five this week, we have Oregon State University Open Source Lab hosts 160 projects. The South California Linux Expo is coming up next week. It's an annual open source event that our staff and readers really love, and this year's speaker lineup is top notch. So prior to the event, which is also called Scale 13X, we interviewed some of them to give you a glimpse into some of the conversations that will be going on at the conference. We have a collection of interviews on the site right now and more coming next week. One of them is with Emily Dunham, who will give a talk called Human Hacking. Emily is currently finishing her final year in computer science at Oregon State University, where she is the student systems engineer at their open source lab. At number four, we have open hardware helps businesses make products for cheap. Tinkers and makers around the world are singing the praises of open hardware. Why? Because Lamore Freed, founder and CEO of open hardware manufacturer Adafruit Technologies, says in this article, Open source hardware is the best way for the engineers of the future and other engineer curious people to understand what's going on under the hood of the devices that surround them. So check out this article for more from Lamore Freed on this phenomenon, including how open hardware is keeping costs down while increasing efficiency and mitigating risk. At number three this week, without open source, there would be no DevOps. Magnus Hedmark talks open source and DevOps in this article that is part of our new Easy DevOps column. The big takeaway here is that successful adoption of DevOps requires a strong culture to support it, and Hedmark believes the best DevOps cultures have their roots in open source communities. Find out more about why in this thoughtful article on the subject. At number two, we have Open Modular Phone Catches the Eye of Google. Luis Ibanez interviews Dave Hackens, the green thinker behind phone blocks, which is an effort to reduce electronic waste through modular hardware for our smartphones. This technology will help us be able to pick and choose the components of a phone that might be most important to us, allowing us to also choose to not include parts we do not need. In this interview, Dave shares the story of what brought him to this mission and what he believes the future holds for one of our most treasured devices, our phones. All right, finally, at number one this week, we have what the Ubuntu phone could mean for open source. Jono Bacon debuts his new column on the site called Six Degrees. He tells us he plans to write about the power of open source, and if you're familiar with Jono, you know to expect a great sense of humor while he talks about issues he feels are important to the gr growth and success of open source across the many different projects and people out there running them. Jono is formerly the Ubuntu Community Manager at Canonical and currently now the Senior Director of Community at, at the XPRIZE Foundation. Thanks for joining me this week everybody. Enjoy the articles. Find the links in the notes below and we'll see you next week.